that everybody's talked about. You know, what does Master Chef do? It informs and it inspires. What does Joe Cross Juicing Vegetables do? It informs and inspires. If he did it, maybe I could do it too. The inform and inspire message on packaging, I think, is a really important opportunity for us to take advantage of. Because, you know, we have to face the facts that our products are not the easiest to necessarily know when they're ripe or know when they're good or know when they're at their peak. So why not inform and inspire? And let's do it potentially in a clever way. So this little yogurt pack here was one of my finds last week when I was in Sydney. What I like about it is how many times do we just use the nutritional panel and then have a starburst on the front that says high in vitamin C? It's kind of de rigueur in produce packaging, right? That's what we do even though we own significant nutritional stake in the ground business. What have these guys done? Well, first of all, it's a package for kids, right? Kids vanilla yogurt. So they've made all the core messaging for mums with young children. So what does that mean? They've taken away all the sophistication. Packed with goodness is one of the phrases on the front. And on the back, protein for growing bodies. Low fat, low GI for sustained energy and concentration. I want to send my child to school with sustained energy and concentration because that's got to be good for them. Gee, the yogurt fits, right? See how they're making the match? Gluten-free for strong bones and teeth for happy tummies and immunity. So see how they've taken exactly the same medium that all of us have access and availability to use, but do you see how they've translated it in a different way to be relevant to their target audience, which is mums with young children? Brilliant strategy, very strong informational strategy that's also quite inspiring. Saw this, I think I was in Perth, I can't remember. Um, love with the pineapple people, probably one of the best examples of produce branding and opportunity optimization that I've seen in four or five years. A, it's beautiful, so it captures that whole sunshine internal element of the pineapple, and B, they're giving away something to make me consuming pineapples, make consuming pineapples easier. What a great cross-pollination opportunity. So we're going to, A, not only inspire you to buy a pineapple, but then they're going to give you a tool to make you want to eat more pineapples because now they're actually easier to eat. It's sheer brilliance. Um, we waste some opportunity when we just put, you know, we talked a little bit about grower brand. You know, I get that it's important, but it's just not important to the consumer. So at some point you're going to need to make a choice because those stickers, that was on a piece of dragon fruit in Sydney, Melbourne, those stickers are a really wasted educational opportunity. I mean, most people don't know how to buy or eat dragon fruit. The only place we can communicate that message cost effectively is on that sticker. And we've taken that sticker up with a brand that means nothing rather than using it as an opportunity. So some of these things apply whether you do a sticker, a punnet, a little wee box, or a, a plastic bag. The same strategies still apply. How are we going for time, Kerry? Okay. If you want to talk about Sunkist, because what I, my thing with the Sunkist is that even though they're one of the biggest and most successful marketers in the world, if you don't know what a Moro orange is and that the interior is a red flesh, there's absolutely nothing on any of their packaging anywhere that tells you that. And I just find that that was an interesting missed opportunity because it's pretty hard to convert someone to try something new if we don't know what new looks like. So again, I think even sometimes the big boys don't necessarily optimize the opportunity. We've talked a little bit about this already. You know, consider the role of your brand. It maybe can fill a different place in the eyes of the consumer than the role it's currently filling if it's based a bit more on history or tradition. You know, and again, full marks to jazz marketers because they've done exactly that with their little apple pack. So rather than, you know, they've got jazz, the brand there fairly prominently. But they've also recognized that people are buying more than Jazz the brand. They're buying Snackers. And on the back, it says Little Apples for Little Hands. Would love to see that statement actually brought around to the front, because I think it's a bit more compelling. But they've done a great job. You know, the Go-Gurt, what I love here about this one is that it can extend to the on-box marketing as well. That says a big tick there says School Smart. That's just a great subtle message to send to a mom as she's about to contemplate buying that yogurt versus the other yogurt. This Go-Gurt stuff happens to be School Smart. Oh, I might just actually have that one because maybe that's to some degree a little bit better. So it's not just the physical packaging, but it's also the retail pack sometimes that it appears in. And I just love that brand at the top, Foodology. Just another great, clever brand um, that's emerging in the grocery space. And again, our opportunity 
to capitalize on branding, I think, in produce is still relatively untapped. We're still pretty focused on who we are, not what we can actually do to deliver benefit or value to the shopper. And finally, I think, you know, we've got to be cheeky. We, if anybody's in a position to be cheeky and start to have some fun, it's us. You know, ultimately, we have goodness on our side. So let's think about being cheeky. So I'll just tell you a couple of stories. So that one up in the top corner, Wata, you know what their moniker is? Water designed by kids for kids. And they tell a fantastic little story on their pack about how they have water that was developed by their children for children. Now what's interesting, hold on, I've done the, I pursued this a bit because I thought it was very interesting, um, is they do a range of waters, and this is exactly what they say. This is my last slide carried on. So they talk about, so the brain waters, they do different waters, they do brain water, they do body water, they do energy water. The brain water, guess what it contains? <laughs> I think this is hilarious. Well, it contains water, purified water. It contains kid-friendly electrolytes, absolutely no sugar. And the big selling point, it tastes like water. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, and people buy it. People pay an absolute fortune. That was like $3.99 for this little tiny bottle of water. Now, if marketing on packaging doesn't make a difference, I defy you to argue that point with me. We're all very similar with the cuties out of America. And just a couple of the, the brands that I've been able to be involved with, I think I'm really proud of. The final one I want to share with you, and then we'll start to wrap up. Scarrots. Anybody follow the Scarrots launch out of the United States? Ashley, you would have. Yep. Fantastic, right? What's the Scarrots premise? They've done exactly what we're talking about today, but they've taken it. So on, we're here at the moment to the pendulum. They've come right over to this side and said, what's it going to take for us to market baby carrots like a junk food? They've brought in a big ad agency to completely reconcept this con the, the concept of baby carrots. A couple of things I love. First of all, who was it put together by? A bunch of carrot farmers. Isn't that lovely? That just says something about authenticity, that a package like this probably needs to ground it in the competitive space of a snack food. Their tagline, eat them like junk food. They packaged them in little packs like you might buy a muesli bar. And what they did was they launched it at Halloween with a seasonal brand called Scarrots. So rather than going knock, knock, knocking on the door in the face of the obesity epidemic, right, everybody wants their kids to be healthier, rather than getting a Mars bar or a Reese's peanut butter cup, you could actually give a bag of little baby carrots. That's the future, right? As our generation Y moms get older, as we got men who are shopping, people who care a lot less about seeing the product in the bag because they just don't know what the product in the bag means, that's the future, okay? Huge opportunity there for us to be involved more aggressively in that space. I want to leave you with a quote and then we're done. The aim of marketing is to know and understand the customer so well that the product fits and sells itself. Which means the goal of packaging then has to be communicating the knowledge of the consumer in a compelling way to drive your sales and drive your value. This is a space I'm hugely passionate about. I'm around for the rest of the conference. We'll have some time to take some questions. Come and see me and if I say, if you're absolutely passionate about packaging, please feel free to join me on Twitter. So what I do is I, as I travel around the world, I take photos, because I just bought an iPhone and it's way cool. I take photos of really interesting packaging and then I send those photos out with a little bit of a tweet about what I think we can learn from that package. So it's a great way to see some interesting packaging samples across the whole realm of grocery, fresh produce and everything um, from around the world. And if you come across any interesting samples or you're doing something innovative in this space, please send it to me and let me know because I keep track of it on my website. All right, thanks so much for your time. I hope this has sparked some, some real thinking about how much more you can do with your brand and packaging opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Time for a couple of quick questions. Is there any questions out here? Yeah.
I think the interesting overriding ten. Thank you, Dana. Sorry. Um, just as a general rule, if, if I could just get you to take your questions and responses to the mic in the middle, because we are being taped, that would be really helpful. I think as a general, there's a couple of thoughts that we can overlay that discussion with. I think, first of all, particularly from an Australian point of view, we're starting to see, to see it trickle into New Zealand. At least we're actually starting to see the emergence of an effective brand strategy amongst some of the change, which I think is a positive step forward because there was a, a pretty ugly period there where it was a little bit of everything and it wasn't working at all. So I think the fact that we're seeing an emergence of a brand strategy from some of the big ones is good. The second question that I, would, that I think that you might take to them, potentially for contemplation, would be uh, two points. Number one is it very much goes against the trend of local and provenance. And I think that that's something worth noting, is we have to find a way to not lose sight of that local provenance opportunity on a retail branded pack that might be just too generic to kind of go down to that niche level, because I think that's a real missed opportunity that is coming through hugely in all the trends. Secondly, is I think that just at some point, retail needs to contemplate the difference between grocery and produce from a house branding strategy point of view. So house branding in grocery added depth and additional range to a category that was already pretty broad and pretty deep. In produce, it's actually taken away, appears to be taken away depth and range. And that just needs to be debated at circles higher than, than mine about whether that's where we want to be long term. Because the way that you add value to a category, particularly in light of the fact that at some point we're going to come out of these price wars and everybody's going to want to start drawing more value back into the, into the pricing, the way that you drive that is via segmentation. Because not every consumer buys a product when it's cheap. So you drive value. In fact, I think it was Martin Nebone that put up the chart about the tomatoes and the return. You drive value the moment that you start to segment. So what I, what I would encourage retailers to do is, number one, consider whether it's adding range or taking away, and be open to the opportunities to add more segmented range to produce, because we know that's where it drives value. Secondly, is if they're, if they're committed to branding, and that's the only path, then let's at least co-partner to, to bring in an element of local, and let's start to run their brands to that five-step process. So to make sure that at least the product that we're putting out is still optimizing the opportunity for the on-pack message and isn't just a churning around of facts, but now it just looks different. All right, any other questions? That might have been the only question. And it's a great question. And I think it's, it's going to be a watch this space point of view. Thank you again, guys. OK, before you go, before you go, sorry, before you go, um, please join me in uh, thanking Lisa once again. And on behalf of the uh, Fresh, uh, Fresh Connections Committee, I'd like to